I've got a 60 minute session I'm doing for a client. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals here and get tuned in. Okay, I want to be able to directly connect with my highest self, guides, angels, and Akashic records. However, I feel blocked from being able to do this no matter how hard I try. I would like any blockages removed or healed, especially in my sexual body and in my heart. I cannot tolerate intimacy and I'm terrified of heights, paralyzed by them actually. I would love to be able to help others on their spiritual journey by being able to channel and heal from the very highest sources of light and love. All right. There's, there's so many beautiful pathways going on here. <sighs> Getting you tuned in, looking at your energy field to see how we can help you to access your higher self guides, angels, Akashic records, so that you can use this gift to help others. Now removing blockages healing your sexual body and heart. Do you see how bright this is getting? Just talking about this is just getting so bright. I'm scared of heights myself, so I'm really curious to see what we run across for you when it comes to um, heights, um, intimacy, <sighs> but healing this stuff, oh my gosh, you're just gonna get so bright. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're gonna get so bright we're gonna have to wear shades <laughs> okay make sure I don't have any any distractions here okay I'm ready All right, this is kind of like starting with the sexual body. The energy is getting dense and heavy right now. So it's a slowing me down. It's getting more serious. And I'm going through a tunnel and the tunnel is the vagina. Okay, so we're moving through this. All the while, there's this image over here, and it's of mountains. The thing about the image of mountains is there's no real relationship with the reality. So at the top of the mountain, it's going to be really cold, right? There's going to be wind. You're going to feel it. But when I look at this image, it's all muted out. It's just like looking at a photograph. But there's meant to be more... Um, real, a more of a real energy to this image than just something that's flat. Now we're still walking through this tunnel. We're going to have to really connect with the vulnerability because even for me to be in here, um, it's wanting to mute the reality. It's wanting it to be more flat, more like a photograph. This could be very vulnerable, okay? And that's just fine. If it starts to feel emotional, then just be emotional. That's part of the healing and purifying process. It's like we can drink water to cleanse our inner body, but we cry to also cleanse our inner bodies too. There's a lot more um, feelings in here and they're all trying to be muted, trying to just flatten it, make it a matte finish, no gloss. And <laughs> it's really trying to mute out um, the vulnerable feelings going on here. So this is intertwined between what is your sacral chakra there's like an etheric um, layer to your sexual body and a physical more of a physical aspect 
I mean, these layers go on and on and on and on, but there's more closest to our physical reality and then deeper and more etheric, more energetic. But there's a sort of a wrapping around between your your sacral chakra and your physical sexual body. It's just wrapped together. This is a comfort image, this mountain. So as I allow the mountain to feel more real, just by making it feel cold, um, by touching the snow on the top of the mountain, feeling the breeze, it's allowing your sexual body to open up. We're just using a gentle image here. So it's creating a sense of safety. We may have to use more of these types of images because I'm sending you just an image of just a flower. It has no thorns on the stem. It's very simple. It's like a pinkish color. It's just a stem and what kind of flower is this? A lily? I'm just continuing to amplify the simplicity, the beauty, the gentleness of the flower, the realism of the mountain. This isn't bringing in any fears of heights. It's very sp specific about your sexual body. When we bring balance to your sexual bo body, it's more than intimacy. That's a big, that's an important part of being human, right? Um, intimacy and connection with another soul but also intimacy and connection with the planet with uh, all the people that live here with our job with our family members like it's it's a love of being alive it's the pleasures of life but also loving yourself too healing this sexual body is definitely especially where we're beginning here we got to be really gentle about it that tells me there's some extreme trauma that's sort of in that's lingering in here it doesn't want to hurt it doesn't want to talk too much about it, it doesn't want to help me to feel the hurt yet <laughs> but if we can neutralize and bring balance and love to this space it will open your psychic gifts because this is a this is a major um, wall on letting the love in. It's self love is also higher self is also spirit guides is also heaven sources. It's connecting to the beyond. So all chakras are a part of developing psychic ability. But this is definitely a good place to start. Okay, so you're judging yourself, there's shame. It's still very flat in comparison to what those feelings actually feel like. So it's like I'm pulling a card, this card says judge, judging self, this card says shame. But it's not letting me actually feel the emotions. They're too crippling. It's too painful. This is going to be complex. All right. You have a part of yourself. It's almost like you have a mermaid that's half woman, half fish. Okay. But it's almost like half woman, half spider. 
So you are sort of like down to the, the hips become like a spider's body and legs. And then you're resting on top of it. And because the energy in here is so flat, it doesn't want to help me to know um, what the feelings are associated with this. Because this image can mean so many things. So I'm just going to ask her, do you like spiders? She says, I don't know how to disconnect. I'm, I don't know how to be whole. I don't know how to just be me. I don't know how to get detached from the spider's body. I say, don't worry about it. Why not just feel comfortable being half a woman and half a spider's body? Maybe it, we need to start by just being okay with being strange. <laughs> The next thing is, you show me your arm, your hands are lifting you up and off of the top of this spider. It's like a tarantula. And I just see your intestines hanging. So you have no legs, like you were cut off. So like uh, right where the pelvic bone is, like right where your belly button is, let's just say right there. Somebody just took a big old samurai sword and just cut you in half and then set your, the top of you on top of this this furry tarantula with eight legs and you're lifting yourself up and I see all these intestines dangling and you're saying that but I'm not a part of the spider I'm separate my body is separate from the spider I was just placed on top of it I say, what happened to the lower half of you? You're, you're kind of glitching out. Like you can't, you can't even remember yourself, but yet you do remember and you know what happened, but it just glitches right there. I show you the picture of the mountain and I show it to you f at first flat and then I show you the mountain starting to become more alive more real as we would experience it and I ask you what does this mean to you this mountain <sighs> you say uh, uh, I'm never gonna it's like you're feeling a very long time and you're no, nothing's ever going to change. You're never going to get better. This is never going to go away. And when you express that energy, you show me how much is involved here with this sexual imbalance. How much is truly involved in it? And I say you're attached to too many things because there's nothing else involved in it but what is right now. When I say that I'm already dissolving these energy cords to you being attached to too many ideas associated with this issue. 
you're separating yourself off into too many pieces when really we just need to be present in the one issue, in the one experience. The reason why you're doing that is to keep it muted and flat. The, the more you separate yourself from yourself and um, kind of attach yourself to all these different things, it, it kind of mutes the sensation of the bigger issue. Because now you have so many parts of yourself scattered. When really we need to bring them all in and just face this head on. It's kind of like... Um, you ever have to have a really hard conversation, so you start talking about something that's easier to digest, and then work your way around to some other conversation, and slowly but surely, then you'll talk about the hard thing. <laughs> it's like, why not just get it over with and just say the hard thing, you know? <laughs> why do we gotta tiptoe around? So you're kind of putting all yourselves out there, um, in these different pockets of reasons why and this is going to take forever and it's never going to heal because you're connected to so many so many distractions okay so many reasons why well there there are good reasons but they're all distractions too so we got to bring all the selves back you're really afraid of feeling certain emotions really afraid of feeling certain emotions because you won't express the emotions, it's hard for me to tell you what emotions they are. There's a self-judgment and a shame. Those are two, but I still can't feel the emotions inside you. This is just what I'm sort of touching. <laughs> so I have to continue to open you up gently to being feeling safe to feel. In order for me to be able to really tell what the feelings are really noticeably because it's more than that it's there's more to it than this you are so afraid of certain feelings so why don't we define it as the feeling of intimacy itself let's just define as let that okay i'm i'm you right now i'm a i'm just like a an upper body just set atop of a furry tarantula spider and I and I'm just saying to the world that I am afraid of intimacy and I and so I'm you and you're me and so together we're saying that out loud so we can hear it out loud and decide am I afraid of intimacy or is it something else Okay, intimacy is asking you um, almost to, okay, boy, it's complicated. When I said the word intimacy, it echoes through here and I see you in so many different shapes and it's asking you to be all these different shapes. And you don't know what actual shape to be. What shape can I be that is a good shape? That is the right shape? That is the best shape? And I say, why don't we let go of shapes? It's almost like sexual positions in a way. It's almost like putting on a bunch of different roles um, of what could be sexy. And not really sure what one actually works. And feeling confused by this. So I, I just let all this go because it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what is defined as sexy or positions or shapes. Just talking about this is creating emotion. <laughs> because um, the next feeling that comes to me is like, um, like I wanna make the experience special 
then maybe I don't know how to, but I don't know how to let somebody make the experience special for me either. I tell you you're doing a really good job just simply talking about it. There's a lot of agony in the heart right now. A lot of agony. This, the, we're almost there to Pandora's box, which is needing to be opened. You're gonna set yourself free. But there's a lot here, so... The heart is very, very heavy and tight, okay? It's like a stone wall. It's more special than that, though. It's kind of, um, all right, the energy, it's like um, a magical world and um, a stone wall with a shape on it. And this shape is symbolic. What is it symbolic of? I, I don't know, but um, it's also kind of like a burial chamber. And it's in the, what could be, um, it's not a mountain, it's like a cliffside, but I see there's a, a long, you could walk through the grasses for a long time and then you will find this. It's got a Stonehenge kind of vibe to it as well, but it's, you couldn't lift this, like, it would take a lot of people to be able to move this massive stone slab, okay? This is the heaviness in your heart. It echoes this image and this feeling. It's, it's really, in, in, like, interesting, <laughs> okay? All right. This is so good because you're expressing yourself, all right? You're actually expressing yourself in an intimate way because you're sharing with me. You're sharing with all of us. And, and I can feel that. And it's actually just me acknowledging this is moving things in your heart too. <laughs> this is hard stuff. I can tell this is really hard stuff. <sighs> All right, I'm just gonna, we're, we're working as one, you and me, we're one. And I'm helping you to feel how heavy this is in the heart, and it's okay. If, if this weighs 10 million tons, it's okay. But what, what we need to do is feel it. Because if we're choosing not to feel, it's because we want to just sort of, if we don't feel it, then it's not there, you know, but it's there. And also when we are choosing to avoid feeling things, we are projecting our soul out of the body. So to be fully immersed in being human, you have to really embrace all the feelings, even the gross ones. And it's it strengthens and empowers you. This is how you tune into your guides and higher self. This is how you're going to help people in your life. When you, you are, I, you're going to do this. You're going to accomplish this, okay? Baby steps, but you bringing in the ability to feel more is going to, it's like the key to the door that you're seeking. Don't resist. The more you choose to feel and even cry about it, even in a ridiculous way, get angry, all those emotions are really healthy because what I'm walking into here, I have to be very delicate with it because it is so, so sensitive. The more it's safe to feel, the more your psychic ability is going to turn the volume up, okay? Okay. This is a this is a slight distraction, but this is appropriate. Um it's the back of the the upper shoulders, the back side. And my back is starting to ache. My upper back is starting to ache really bad. 
like really feel sore, all right? It's taking us away from continuing to focus on the sacral chakra and sexual body, the physical, etheric, sacral chakra space and the heart. So this is taking us away from these energies. However, everything in the universe says it, this is okay. We're going to look at this. All right, upper shoulders are really, really achy. Also, it's almost like getting punched in the back, right? So here's the heart portal on the front, and then there's the heart portal on the back. It's like getting punched really hard in the back side of the heart portal. And punched really hard in the back. Ah. So we're going to just feel what this feels like. Good, 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 good. <laughs> You're shifting. <sighs> All right. I'm saying this is getting active. Okay. There's a pretty angry looking face. And that's, that's very good. That's something we need to look at, talk to, help uh, bring balance to it. <sighs> Throat's starting to kind of blurge out a bit. It's tighter on the sides of the neck. Um, there's just sort of dense energy in the back of the head and the crown chakra, okay? And there's just a lot of menacing anger, like violent anger. And this is another spider person. It's not you, but it may be an aspect of your soul, it, it, of yourself. It could be um, another being. So I need to keep looking at this, but it's like... A, a black widow spider and it's got like a spider-man type mask but it's all the colors of black and red it's got like a spider-man like suit but it's a woman energy and she's got like really angry eyes like evil angry eyes that's because i'm shifting your energy field and your, what you were was covering this energy up. And this is felt. There's nothing flat here about it. <laughs> this could still be an aspect of yourself, but um, the word control comes to me very loudly. And the feeling of an army of spiders that aren't going to let you free not going to set you free and they're gonna fight they're going to fight for what their needs are and I see you all bound up in like spider web material and you can't speak you can't move and you're completely stuck and imprisoned This is very, very, this is really dark stuff. But what I'm doing is I'm just sending an image of a heart that's glowing from the inside with pure love. And this is your heart because your heart is glowing from the inside with pure love. So I'm sending an echo of this pure glowing heart into every single spider that's here. There's sort of like this queen spider and then there's all these little minion spiders. And I mean, it's like an army of spiders, but they're all starting to have a glowing heart. And as their hearts glow, this is sending energy up from the lower neck to the upper neck to the lower back of the head. Also starting to circulate energy around the third eye. Solar plexus is feeling this. I'm using the element of water as well 
and I'm the water is pure and I'm purifying their beings that's the energy that is meant I mean this is just an inspiration that's manifesting and I feel the purification of the body purifying their beings with pure water it's almost like virgin energy like pure innocence youthful fresh brand new this is there's a lot behind this i will say this is exhausting And it's not just exhausting on the back side of the heart portal or even the upper back. It's really weighing me down in the front side as well. This And it's also like burning my emotional gut. <laughs> There's a lot of heavy energy just p pulling me down, pulling me forward. Third eye is affected as well with a lot of heavy energy. This is great because we're moving energy that's been lodged. <laughs> This your energy field is becoming active like it's communicating with its feelings This is huge Okay, this is real this is okay I'm just tuning back in here back at the heart portals where what I'm focusing on right now primarily Okay, this is another weird, it says, so I put my hand into the back side of your heart portal, just to transmute the energy, just continue to send light and love. And then I put my other hand into your lower back, which is the back side of your sacral chakra. Something sexual um, is sort of emanating from doing this. So let me explore what that means. And it's not, um, it's almost like a seductive sexual energy. It's like, um, I can't tell if this is a woman coming up behind another woman or a woman coming up behind a man or a man coming up behind a woman. So all three could be correct, but it's like um, a sexual touch from coming up behind and then reaching around and it's a sexual touch. This is the echo that comes out after I place my hand upon the back side of your sacral chakra just to continue to transmute energies and the back side of your heart portal. So I'm going to continue to look at the image and make sense of it and what it's expressing. That army of spiders is still in a, a transformation process. They're not doing any harm anymore. I'm asking a part of your consciousness how that felt when the image just projected. How did that make you feel? You don't really have any thought about it. You don't have an opinion about it. It 
ask you what you think about that spider Black Widow woman and the a spider army. Okay, we are definitely moving back into the sacral chakra. And this is a different side of yourself. It's just, it's almost like it's eating a hot dog and some potato chips. Like we're having a picnic outside. And I'm talking to you about serious vulnerable stuff. And you're um, like enjoying a sunny day. So we're not speaking at the same frequency. We're not speaking the same language right now. And you're not wanting to talk about like... You're doing a really good job of just acting like, <laughs> ignoring this. All right, I'm going to have to do something to get you tuned back in. Because we're not going to work with distractions anymore. We're going to be completely present in this vulnerability. Are you ready to be more completely present in this vulnerability when it comes to intimacy? I changed the scene. There's no food here. There's no picnic table or sunny sky. It's just us in the sacral chakra. Okay, I'm re-entering into, there's no emotions, there's, I can't feel anything, but I am shown pictures, and it's like you disappear, and I'm surrounded by all these um, squishy skeletal beings, they all look like ske full skeletons, but they're kind of squishy, like I could stretch them out and stuff. And there's a semicircle of them, and I'm walking into the semicircle, and they're starting to kind of close around me. But there's no feelings, no emotions in here, so I can't understand the meaning of this other than this is the picture. Looking at all the skeletons, they all emanate male. I feel like there is a female skeleton in here. Hmm. I'm going to have to just put this image in here. And it's a lo two women that love each other deeply. And it's very natural. And I see this scene, it's like it really wants to be looked at. And I see two women who are very like, um, it's kind of medieval, it's like Stonehenge energy, it's, um, and they're naked. And they're kind of witch, witch type energies. And they're best friends. They both are beautiful. They look different. Like one has really thick brown hair. And the other one is just like very fine, like orangish colored hair. And they're all both very attractive. Very um, different looking women, but beautiful. Best friends, really tuned into nature. And I see them naked with each other in the forest. And it's pure, intimate love. Like, it's like finding the holy grail of a lover. And there's no, there's no second thought. It's so natural. It's so instinctive. It's so freeing. And they spend time by this water and they swim and they have fun in the water together 
they spend so much time together and they go into the forest, they talk about everything, they do everything together. I mean, they're best friends. They're also lovers. You don't want to talk about it. You you show me an image of yourself and your throat has been replaced with a big rock. And your your mouth is like a bird's beak. Interesting beak and speak. And you can't speak. And you have a bird's beak. You don't want to talk about it, is what you emanate to me without saying that. And I see you kind of, like, tied up against a tree. And you look down at the ground, but you don't say anything. And I say, you know, love is forever. There's no separation. So you got to have time together to enjoy this beautiful connection that is ultimate, like an ultimate lover. You aren't showing me what happened to that relationship. You're just showing me what was wonderful about it, what was special, what could never be replaced. That, that lover will, can never be replaced. I'll never, nobody would ever be able to fill those shoes. Nobody would ever be able to complete you like she did. And you have to let her go. Because you are, you are creating, you are manifesting with that. It's, it's one way of saying I love you more than I, could ever love anybody else in the whole wide universe. That's pretty darn special, right? But that's for eternity. That's not loving anybody else ever again. And your soul has to learn how to accept loss and moving on and learning how to love again, even love that isn't as satisfying. Because love isn't all about intimacy. It's it's just about connection. Sometimes the connection is off the charts and sometimes it's, it's just not. But that doesn't make it any less beautiful or special. You're, you're starting to cry and there's a lot of orange energy that is gushing out like a river of orange and you're crying there's something different about you you're looking more like a bird now than ever and I feel a pressure on the third eye this throat rock in the throat I mean it's like replacing the voice box with a rock and I can see the rock when I look at you but you're looking more and more like a, f a huge bird, the size of a human, with bird face, bird body, and everything. You want, you don't want to be human for a while. <sighs> Boy, this is very disorienting. And when I say that, there's a lot of energy rush up the top of the spine and across the top of the head, um, circulate around the third eye. Again, the throat's very tight still. You, you are really, you will not, it's like you will never love ever again. And you won't be human. You are going, you want to be an animal. That's perfectly fine. You get to decide what you want. But you're deciding based on a frequency of pain. 
and anguish. Instead of working on the pain and anguish, you're running away from it. When you really need to sit with it full on. You're, you're getting more expressive. You're screaming now. Th thank goodness. Like you're starting to feel again. This is all in your sacral. And you're screaming. Like. Like you can't take my love away from me. You can't do this. Like I will turn into an animal. And I will rip you all apart. There's no coping skills. There's literally only a snapping of of the body, the mind, body, spirit. Like it's like go from human into animal in reaction to to this lover being taken away from you. And you will kill everybody. That's the snap. It literally I hear a bone break in it. They're saying that you snapped. Because the love was so strong, it was like, it was like bending time and space. Like, it was so strong. It's the greatest wrong ever committed. And I'm pulling, you have selves as different animals. Raccoon, bear, a moose. I, I'm pulling you in. Um, and a bird. I'm pulling you in. Even a snake in here. All of these animal selves. I'm pulling you in. You never had the c capacity to process this. You just, you snapped. I don't get to see the whole story here. But it's like you really did go on to live animal lives in order to avoid pro working through this, what happened. I'm going to bring her back to you, her spirit. She's the one with the orangish colored hair. She's super angelic. She is super beautiful, angelic. Lots of different shades of orange and golden and like cream into white. Like gorgeous array of these colors. A very noble energy. She feels very noble. You also have, have warrior energy to you. And you really emit lots of really intense blue and green, red, purple. There's a lot more male um, side to you from this life, okay? You emit more male energy. This is a lot. I mean, the pressure on the head here and the third eye is a lot. A lot of exhaustion. This is all good because this is all just pouring out. See, I show you, you see why the spider army, it's only just encouraging you to never change, to never heal. To never acknowledge that there is no separation and that the love is forever. And that we have divine times with each other over many lives. And sometimes the divine time is cut way too short in the most wrong way possible. And it's affecting. It's, it's, a, it's like a blast. Like God hates you. <laughs> it's hard to recover sometimes because love can mean that much to us.
this older version of you, this um, woman with the really intense, this, she's gorgeous looking. I mean, she has very thick brown hair. She really emits all these very intense colors. And she's looking at her lost love. It, it's very hard to look her in the eye. You know what's so interesting about this? Is your souls are so close that it's it's like now that I'm getting to experience more of this angel, this angel also feels like you. You both are so closely intertwined that you both feel like each other. And there's something about, this is just getting more amplified, and I can feel just this circulation between your two souls, and it's, it's safe to let the love in, safe to be held, it's safe to cry, safe to feel wronged. We're human here. So this is just circulating, circulating in your heart and, and sacral chakra. And you don't know whether you can kiss her or not because you want her to be real and not like a hallucination. <laughs> and again, you're speaking as this brown-haired girl. And you say, I want, I want to be with her again. I mean, this is a part of your soul journey speaking. All these animal lives were simply to just, is to avoid, it's like, it's like tap dancing around the conversation, the hard conversation the need, that you need to have, but just kind of avoiding and avoiding and tap dancing around it. And so you tap danced around coping with what took place by living a bunch of animal lives. Because it's interesting, I feel these animal lives were almost just like very, they weren't passionate lives. You didn't, I do, you don't emit passionate energy when you are these animals. But we're bringing the spirits of all of these animals because these lives matter too. All lives always matter. Even if your spirit was muted because of the suffering of what took place, it's able to amplify everything now that you're choosing to heal this. And it's bringing this spirit and amplified energy and all these animal lives and this lover back to your heart. And it's giving you the right to just love. She would never have thought any less. It didn't matter what shape or what position or what didn't matter. Because it was what was in your eyes. It was your voice. It was the time together that mattered. That even brought on that love affair. That was so natural. Very exhausting right now. <sighs> There's a lot more that's happening because this lifetime, which is connected with that really heavy stone in your heart, 
the image and energy of like Stonehenge and the kind of magical energy, forest energy, and water nymphs, <laughs> and two lovers that are both women, and the naturalness of it all. It's safe to feel so much gratitude that you actually got to have this experience instead of the pain that it was taken away from you. We're reversing that energy. That way you can be in gratitude of that time. And even, I mean, they show me animal lives, okay? And bringing all of those animal spirits into your own heart that you could, because there was something muted about those animal lives that weren't actually muted. They were quite bright, but because of what you were carrying, it wouldn't have been felt. But this healing, this is bringing the animal spirits and helping you to feel bright and connected, <laughs> very connected. But you have a part of you inside that has actually been kind of um, putting a lot of blocks into place because you just didn't want to go there. You just didn't want to look at this life. And you, you're actually sending signals to different blocks in your body to, it's okay to move, it's okay to just let it go. It's like you're holding yourself down, holding yourself back. You're standing up now and you have this really beautiful green star in your third eye and in your throat and your eyes are just glowing with light. You look strong. There's a Celtic energy here. I mean, you, you are a part of her too. Because there's something very angelic, but there's also something like a warrior energy too, and courage and strength. But also magic as well, in connection with the earth and nature and animals. And there's this Celtic energy. And you're starting to stand with strength in these energies as a part of your identity. And you're loving yourself for it. And it's important that I reveal this. I mean, it's like you are standing up, but you are standing up tall and loving yourself with you feeling secure. You're feeling the strength within you. And by standing up, there's burdens on your back that are just falling to the wayside. Because you're... You're acting as yourself. You're not holding yourself back. You're not holding yourself down. I feel her spirit inside of you. And I feel that lifetime very bright in your heart. And it's not a heavy stone slab with a, like a catacombs or a burial on the other side. It's, it's bright. It's free, it's breathable. It, it's the love of that lifetime here and bringing those animal lives as well. That's important. They're animal spirits. That's all there, there is to say about that. This is a powerful step forward. 
this is just <sighs> so this session is moving quite a lot okay if you feel sleepier than usual just rest and if you feel more emotional than usual just cry and it can the loudest transformation is going to happen within the first like five days but so the first five days three to five days could be tired could be emotional could be um you could sleep really good you could feel awesome you know <laughs> anything can happen but as those days pass you're gonna feel freer and freer clearer in your mind you're gonna feel like a heavy coat was just removed and you're more exposed and you're loving it. <laughs> so give this time to process, okay? That was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. And I'm just so glad I got to connect with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing as well. What a powerful story. <sighs> All right. For those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a beautiful day, everybody.